Hello, I'm Tom Kerridge, owner and the chef um, patron, I suppose, of the Hannah Flowers, the coach, and the Butcher's Tap, or one of the owners of the Butcher's Tap. There's like a few of us. So before we turn it into the Butcher's Tap, it was, um, it was actually a wet lead boozer. I mean, a, a, an Irish pub. British pubs are struggling. I, I mean, wet lead pubs are struggling. As an industry, we're all having to look at how we can make that survive, and they're struggling because High street rents are high. Not many people drink during the day anymore. A lot more people are looking for quality over quantity. So two, two glasses of real ale, you know, isn't gonna keep a boozer alive. So if there was a way that I sat down and thought of how I can make a pub like this operate, how I can open it from eight o'clock in the morning and operate as a retail unit, and then, you know, five o'clock in the evening, it still does its wet lead trade without upsetting. It still feels like a pub, but it also has to be that retail outlet. If we can mix the two together, that gives us 16 hours of trade that could probably afford to pay the rent. So that was kind of how we decided to merge the two together. I've known Andy for about 10 years now, and he was the main point of contact um, for the catering side of Walter Rose Butchers based in Devizes, who we use for all of our meat for the hand and flowers and for the coach. So his knowledge of meat and quality product is extensive and amazing. And he was talking about getting back into the retail side of it. That customer communication, that point of contact, the, the conversation is something that's really important. We came across with the idea, I said, look, let's make this work, let's work with a business, let's work together as business partners and, and, and make it happen. Yeah, Marlowe's a really important town. Um, it's been so supportive of us and what we've done from the moment we've opened. It's just a nice place to live. It's just hopefully adding something to the environment and the community and the people that live here. Yeah, so there is a food offering here. We tried very hard to make sure that we didn't want people to expect food, but we did want to be able to offer something for, there's screens on, it's, it's a wet lead pub that people come and watch a sport, you know. So we have bacon sandwiches, coffees, and then we do, we do hot dogs from 12 o'clock. We've got someone who makes amazing hot dogs for us, the sausage that's made to our spec. And I mean, it's a proper hot dog, it's, a, it's lush. We pulled pork on the top and pickled chilies and mustard mayonnaise and like it's delicious. And then we bake everyday uh, sausage rolls uh, in the ovens upstairs. And then every night, every evening from around about 6, 6.30, we have a dish of the day and it might be venison chili it may be chicken wings it may be i don't know beef, beef stew it's about it being a wet lead pub with bar staff and butchers during the day that's what it's supposed to be so a small food offering there's definitely an opportunity to do more with this because it's not based on a particular chef's style of cooking it's chicken wings and it's hot dogs and it's well sourced meat that we find there's no reason why we can't implement, implement that somewhere else. A vision of success for the Butcher's Tap is that it just works. Back and it just feels that people come in and they enjoy being here. You get a load of locals coming back. The brewery is supportive. The local brewery that we buy the beer from is supportive. You know, England win the World Cup. And, you know, those sort of things. That, that would make it feel like it works. You know, the idea of it just, just operating as a really nice pub that survives.